Hey YouTube, back home here sitting inside my 2017 A-Liner Ranger. I did a video earlier to show you some of the modifications we've made to the outside. Now I'd like to show you what we've done to the inside. This might take a while as we've done uh, quite a few things to try to make life inside the A-Liner a little easier. The door seems like a good place to start. One of the challenges of a folding camper is getting a screen door in it. And so uh, I bought this magnetic screen door on Amazon for $20 delivered, I think. Uh, my wife shortened one half of it a little bit so it would fit the width of this door. And then we just affix it with um, white Velcro, the, the hook part on the wall there, and then down the sides of the door frame we've glued, hope you can see this, black Velcro. So it looks just like the black door frame. Uh, when you first get to the campsite, you take that out of a drawer or whatever, put it up. It can be there for the duration of the camp out. Uh, you just walk right through it. It pulls itself back together via the magnets. Uh, we used it down in the Okefenokee where there's a lot of mosquitoes and out at the Outer Banks. Uh, and it really worked beautifully. There's that white Velcro on the wall. I don't think it's very noticeable. Um, and then, you know, again, the black uh, down the sides here. And that's what the screen looks like folded up. It takes about a minute to put up. Also inside on the door is a round mirror that goes right over the shade. Uh, that's just a great place to uh, be able to look and comb your hair, uh, shave, whatever you need to do. Next to the door over the dinette seat, I have one of these Velcro um, elastic net pockets. It's been really uh, helpful to have there. You're always looking for storage in an A-liner. Here's another one we keep over um, by the bed uh, next to the sink. Here by the door also are a couple of command hooks that we use for keys. Um, another one here that we use for a dish rag. And we have, we have two more on the opposing wall over here on each side of the window. I'd like to talk about the lights in the A-liner for a minute. You know, the A-liners typically come with two lights. Uh, they're both One's over the dinette right here, and the other is uh, back over the bed couch. And uh, they're LED. Um, the problem with them is when they come to you, they're all this clear lens. Uh, because they are, you know, just basically at your chest level, they're always in your eyes. Uh, they throw some light down, but they also throw light right into your eyes. So um, here's a simple fix for that. Remove the covers. You simply do that by squeezing together and sliding them out. Um, then on the inside, use painter's tape to cover the area that you would like to uh, not for the light not to be diffused, and spray paint the rest of it with a uh, flat white spray paint. And so what you end up getting uh, is clear down light and nice soft diffused light where it's in your eyes. We didn't feel like these lights gave us adequate uh, light over the stove and the sink where we cook, so I got a couple of these on Amazon. They're battery-powered LED lights. They're remote. They uh, swivel, attached by Velcro, and then the little spot also moves up and down, so they're fully adjustable. And they come with little Velcro discs. We put one on the wall there. When we get to camp. You have to take these down when you when you take the trailer down, of course. But it just takes a second to stick them back up. We have one there, and one there, and then over here on the wall by the door, we have uh, Velcroed the little remote. You can just leave it there and use it like a light switch. But uh, to show you how it works here, uh, basically it's on and off function, and it gives you a really good down light on your sink and your stove. The refrigerator in my A-liner doesn't give you any type of uh, readout, so you, you really never know how cold it is. It's always a mystery. Is your food getting, you know, warm? Um, so this is a common little hack that people use. I borrowed this idea, of course, but this is just an indoor-outdoor thermostat. Again, you can pick this up at Walmart or whatever. Um, this is the outdoor part. We just put it in the fridge with our food. And then we'll put the outdoor readout up here on the counter somewhere so we can always see what the temperature in our fridge is. Something we've really found helpful are these stackable Sterilite drawers, these plastic drawers that you can stack as a tower. Uh, we use three of them. Uh, we use them for our food. Uh, we will uh, 
keep that in the house between trips, load it up with our food, put it in the car. When we first get to the campsite, we carry it in here where it stays for the rest of the camp out. Um, if we're moving from one campsite to the next, we'll just put it up under the table. It rides just perfectly like that. But when uh, our last night out, when we're ready to go home, we'll put that back in the car. And so when we get home, it's already in the car. We don't have to open the camper to get it out. We carry it back in the house, take the perishables out, you know, anything we need to wash or, or put new batteries in or anything like that. So it's a really handy way to move things in and out of the A-liner, and it gives you three more drawers. Speaking of drawers, um, my A-liner came with two cabinet doors uh, here and here. And the bottom one had uh, three plastic drawers that uh, slid in and out not well on kind of plastic runners. And so um, the top was a cabinet that was just open, and we tried a microwave in there for a while. Um, but because of the amount of trips we take and the mileage that we cross, uh, it just wore the microwave out. So I pulled that out and uh, made that one big drawer. So what we have down here are two drawers that I built, and they are on soft close ball bearing slides. They stay shut on their own just fine. Two uh, more narrow drawers on the bottom and a deeper drawer on top. And um, it will open on its own, so I did have to install a uh, latch here to keep it closed during travel. Um, but we use it to put pots and pans and uh, bigger items in that deeper drawer. Now I know that's kind of backwards. If I did it from the start again, I would have the bigger drawer on the bottom, the two smaller drawers at the top. But it's just kind of the way it evolved. I did the bottom two drawers first because uh, we had the microwave. And then when the microwave failed, I made a bigger drawer up top. Uh, for these drawer faces, I just used the cabinet door that I removed and I cut and uh, used knobs that uh, were already in the camper and things like that. So it worked out really well. And it's great because before, if someone was standing here working at the sink, and you wanted to get something out of a drawer, you had to open a cabinet door into their legs and try to pull one of those plastic drawers out, which wouldn't come out unless your cabinet door was completely open, again, into where someone might be standing. Here now, you just can pull the drawer open, uh, you know, however far you need to get what you want. Here's more additional storage that I made. Um, this is under the uh, front dinette seat on the sink and stove side. Um, there is storage under these dinette seats, but the only way to access it from inside is to pull up your cushion as well as a piece of one big piece of plywood. And so it's almost impossible to get to. So um, I cut a hole in this facing and used what I cut out to be a uh, cabinet, uh, cabinet door. And it just swings open like this. And on a couple of wooden runners in there, I have a white bucket that we can keep a toaster, coffee maker, you know, bigger things in there. It just slides in and out as you need it. Um, there's a brace in there to keep it from moving around. So I just kind of created a little space. No fancy drawer, just a nice white tub you can buy anywhere. And goes in and out like that. And when you close it up, it stays right where it needs to. Uh, the only other modification I've made to the cabinets was so we could fit a porta potty up underneath the other dinette seat by the door. Um, so first of all, I've got a safety latch there so it won't come open on its own. Um, but in order to fit the porta potty in there and let it uh, al allow it to slide in and out, I had to remove uh, the bottom piece of framing that was across here. Just sawed that out, and removed it, and then to fit our porta potty in there. Um, I actually had to cut. Uh, not only the face piece but the support piece a little higher uh, so the porta potty would actually fit um, because that was weakened then when I cut it I soldiered another uh, one by two behind it and so it's plenty so strong to continue to sit on there there are a couple of wooden L brackets that I put in place there that just hold the porta potty in its place so it does not move or slosh around <laughs> and uh, I've got a little toilet paper holder, so when you slide it out here and you're using it in the middle of the night, you've got a little bit of toilet paper. 
We were pretty unhappy with the table in the A-liner right off the bat because it wiggled and wobbled so much. It's designed to be able to be taken down off this pedestal and then you put slats across the bench seats so you can make a uh, another bed. Well, it's just my wife and I, so we wanted the dinette uh, always set up and we keep it always set up. The trailer will fold with it set up. Uh, but we hated the fact that it just wobbled all over the place. So I did two things. First of all, and you may not want to do this because it's permanent, but I actually epoxied the post uh, into the receiver there on the floor, as well as epoxying it uh, to the receiver on the table. Then in addition to that, I cut um, about, I guess these are like one by three slats. I found a cabinet member that I could screw into right there and uh, then screwed it up underneath the table using short screws so you don't go through the table and ruin the tabletop. But with those two braces underneath the table and the epoxy, um, you know, it's just rock solid. You know, you can saw that stake and your beer won't spill. That's your standard A-liner dinette seating arrangement and we found it very uncomfortable um, the cushions uh, are not that firm. I think they're like four inch and you know, it's straight up and down So it's not a very comfortable seating position. You know, it's designed so again You can make a bed use the four cushions to make a flat bed across there and we don't use the bed So um, we did a couple things. First of all I replaced this with this and what this is it's a uh, About a quarter inch piece of plywood with a dense foam pad on it, uh, wrapped in a nice material. And on the back, uh, I have cut angled supports and lined them with felt so they don't uh, hurt the cushion here or the back of the camper. But with those in place, when you push this up against the wall of the camper now, it makes a nice angled seat. You don't need a lot of cushion behind your back because that's not where the weight is. But that's like a camp pad cushion there and it's, it's plenty nice because your back is now flat up against this. You can kind of get an idea of how it uh, angles out from the wall. So that's been a huge improvement uh, for allowing us to kind of lounge around the table. And then under the seat cushions, just to give us a little more cush, uh, we stapled um, these camp pads, cut them to length and stapled them to the board that's under here. That gives you access to your storage. So it's a denser foam and that in conjunction with what they give you makes a pretty nice seat. A-liner gives you a little storage at the front of the camper behind the table there under the window um, and it's this piece right here but they leave it as one uh, solid piece. So in order to take it off, you have to move your seat cushions uh, and then wrestle it by the table or whatever. So I cut it into four sections. Uh, that one just stays in place under the seat. Uh, the two in the middle, I've cut finger holes in. And uh, then you can just pop them out while you sit here. Uh, and my wife sewed a fabric pockets uh, that sit down in there so you can drop things down in there. We keep paper plates, bowls, extra toilet paper, paper towels, things like that. And they're just like little hatch lids. You've got one on either side now. We've cut a couple of big pieces of this Reflectix, I believe it's called. It's like that, you know, reflective uh, bubble wrap. That's the reflective material on both sides. We've cut a couple pieces for each of our big bubble windows and they just press in there and hold in place on their own. They're really good for keeping the heat and the cold out. Uh, they also kind of deaden the noise um, if it's raining outside. So there it is, pushed into place. As I said, it stays on its own, and those in conjunction with your shades really do a good job of uh, insulating the camper. We've actually cut those for uh, all of the windows and keep them stored under our bed mattress in case you know we have really cold weather camping 
it helps keep the camper warmer to put all those in the windows and also keeps the condensation down. We also use that Reflectix fore and aft here at the uh, folding joints underneath the little piece of cloth they give you. We were having problems with this during the mildew because of the moisture, um, the condensation that would come through on the aluminum behind here and it's drafty too, particularly over by the bed when you want to sleep. So these are just held in place by a couple little Velcro dots. Pretty much everything that we have done to the trailer I wanted to do with the idea that I could undo it and put the trailer back original. You're always looking for more storage and more counter space in an A-liner so um, what I did here is I took a cutting board and I cut it and shaped it to fit uh, in our sink here. So when you're not using the sink maybe you're just cooking with the stove and you need a place to set the eggs or whatever you can put it right there. Now what I did was I used uh, scrap from where I cut this down to uh, glue little blocks. That's the same material as the cutting board. So it uh, fits inside of that sink and doesn't move around. I had to cut a little uh, place for the faucet and it serves a dual purpose over here. I've uh, made a little channel out of plywood um, and screwed it up underneath the counter here so if I ever remove it you won't see any screw holes but what you do with this is you can take it off uh, and drop it in here and now it's a splash pad a splash screen because we often leave our beds out and I didn't like the idea of you know brushing your teeth or washing your dishes right next to maybe your pillow or the foot of your bedding or something so that now can be set up when you are using the sink um, as a splash guard. There is a small amount of storage space under the sink in our A-liner. Uh, we do not have the furnace so that helps. We keep a trash can under there and some other things but I did a couple things. I got a little uh, door holder here on Amazon. This is just wire mesh and it's good for sponges and dish detergent things like that that you just need at hand and it just just barely does close. I think I had to carve out a little spot there to make it fit. Uh, but that's the smallest one I could find. Um, also just so you don't have to get on your hands and knees and dig around in there for things I did a floor mounted drawer so you can just pull it out you know get your trash bags, cleaning materials, whatever you need. And then I'll close this right up like that. This is something that we've really enjoyed. What we did is we took a shower curtain and we put it across uh, where the bed is and we bought shower curtains. It actually took two and you have to shorten them and hem them at the bottom. My wife is a good seamstress and she did that. But now you have uh, privacy curtains that you can pull. hope I'm getting this. But if someone wants to get up in the morning and start to have their coffee or just you know use that porta potty or whatever you can pull that screen and it makes a very private berth. So the bed cushions in the A-liner are the same four inch cushions that you have for the dinette seat. Um, you can't really see this but we put a two inch memory foam topper on top of it and just uh, kind of fashioned a pocket to keep it clean and um, yeah that just makes the bed a whole lot more comfortable. So we keep it in the double bed configuration pretty much all the time uh, because we find that the couch that it turns into is, is seriously uncomfortable and really not usable. So we, we either are lounging on the bed or sitting at the dinette. So here's the camper uh, with the bed pushed back and now in couch mode. And I wanted to show you a couple of things. There are a couple of storage spaces kind of above the wheel wells. And A-Liner gives you these little Formica hatch tops but in 2017 with mine they extended up underneath this heavy board um, that makes your couch and your bed and so there was absolutely no way to lift these until you uh, move this so I cut them off I used my table saw and a fine tooth uh, blade I put painters tape and things so as to not chip the formica um, but now you can take them on and off and actually use them. Before, uh, you just couldn't get them off until you somehow got this up out of the way. Now the strip that it left, I just glued into place and uh, it just sits there like that. So you just basically have, um, you know, two pieces there. 
Okay, just a couple more things that I can think of that we've done to our 2017 A-liner. Uh, we have the Cool Cat heat pump, and it resides under the bed. And so it's great. It's an air conditioner. When you have electricity, it's your heat. Um, but, you know, like any compressor, it, it vibrates and makes a lot of noise. So um, I tried to isolate that a little bit. So if you'll take, take off the big access hatch here. Um, I wrapped the Cool Cat in some insulation and uh, stuff some uh, to the side there, being very careful that I didn't cover anything that needed to breathe. Uh, and then in addition to that, I bought these panels, these insulated foam panels, and I taped them all around, even underneath the hatch here. Can you see that? So basically what I have is like a completely enclosed section there so everywhere uh, that the cool cat heat pump is working and making noise um, you know it's insulated with these sound boards if you will again it can breathe perfectly fine on the sides and in and out where it needs to uh, but it had to have cut the noise by 50 percent i was amazed so um you know if you're having trouble sleeping at night because your air conditioner keeps coming on and off and you feel like you're um, you know, getting the magic fingers bed or whatever from the vibrations. Uh, try insulating it like this. Uh, again, with these panels, you can buy those at Lowe's um, with just a little bit of wrap insulation and some of this uh, actual metal duct tape. And um, it's made a huge difference for us. Uh, added a couple of outlets. Um, this is a GFI outlet that a-Liner gives you, uh, again, it's on this uh, wheel well hatch. It's under the bed when the bed is out, so it's almost impossible to plug anything into when your bed is out. Um, so I jumped off of it and put one here by the side of the nice flat counter so we can you know, plug a toaster in or a coffee pot right there. And also put one, this is just kind of an old one that I had, I put it inside here, and that's what my uh, microwave used to plug into because remember I had a microwave in the cabinet here and I had the cord come around inside and plug in. Um, if you want to try microwave in yours you could always do that. A-Liner also gives you a uh, outlet, a GFI outlet here by the sink. Um, in order to get some power up to the front of the camper where the table is, um, I borrowed this idea absolutely completely from another YouTuber. Uh, you just get a long um, power strip cord get a power strip with a very long cord and you can run it under the lip of your countertop here holding it in place with like 3m uh, sticky hooks and you get back into the corner you just run it down underneath the dinette and then the cord can come out uh, somewhere right there I drilled a little hole brought it out put a little cover around the hole and uh, there's your power strip. Now I can plug in uh, three or four things up front, right off the table. Okay, I warned you that was going to be a long one. Um, but, you know, after five years and 252 nights in our A-liner, these are little things that we've come to appreciate. They really work for us. Uh, some of them will be for you and some not. But uh, hopefully in all of that you found something that might help you with your A-liner or your small camper. And again, stay tuned. I wanted to show all those because we're getting ready to reconfigure the inside of the camper to allow for twin beds and a lagoon table. And so when I'm through with that, I want to show you the new results. But I wanted to show you all the changes that we've made uh, up to this point because some of them will be lost in the remodel. So, hey, thanks for watching and I hope that's been helpful to you guys.